This meeting is being recorded. Hello, everyone. Welcome to tonight's Artist Loft class on sketching a wooden mannequin using uh, black Artist Loft paper. We're going to be using uh, white on black Artist Loft paper to sketch this wooden mannequin. So. The supply list for tonight um, is pretty simple, just a couple of things and a sketchbook and some pencils. If you do not have black paper, then maybe grab um, some uh, brown grocery store bags and you can rip those apart and use brown grocery store bags as your toned paper as your dark paper instead of black, or if you've got some construction paper lying around, if you don't have the artist loft black notepad, that will work as well. We're going to be sketching a little bit in pencils on white paper, but most of the class is going to be white on black paper. And I see a few people out there have their wooden mannequins, and that's great. But if you don't have a wooden mannequin by artist loft like this, then uh, I gave you a printout of the mannequin in a variety of poses, gesture poses that we can use here tonight. Uh, another class that we had using this wooden mannequin, which covered a lot of the same skill sets as tonight's class was in February of last year. And it was on uh, drawing body proportions and bodies in movement using the wooden mannequin. And our moderator can drop the link to that class in the, the chat. And if you're watching later on uh, YouTube, you can just search in YouTube for Artist Loft Bodies in Motion. That was definitely in the title. It was a very long uh, title. And mannequin is spelled um, with an I instead of the, the traditional, um, like a regular, like you might spell mannequin, it's spelled M-A-N-I-K-I-N is how the, the artist loft mannequin is, is spelled. Uh, spelled, spelled, oh my gosh, my, my six-year-old's rubbing off on me. I'm starting to talk like, <laughs> say my past tense words in a silly way. Um, okay, so um, before we get started, though, I just wanted to mention our upcoming classes that are happening in February so that you don't miss out on signing up for those. So we've got some free and premium classes happening in February. The free class is this class on a mixed media rose painting using a photograph that's provided by me of some roses on the supply list and I've got a lot of different iterations of this so when we get to it I've got like all the different stages so we'll be sure to have some fun uh, products from that because I, I played around with the, the watercolor pencils and a white gel pen again I'm a big fan of the white gel pen and some mixed media paper um, or I'm sorry I think it's watercolor paper I don't know the supply list for that one off the top of my head, so don't quote me on that one, but uh, the premium, so that's a two part free class, the one on mixed media roses, that's the free class, and then the premium class is uh, using an image of a model and we'll be putting a grid on the photograph and we'll be sketching our model Sion, who has appeared in a lot of figure drawing classes up until now uh, from a photo shoot last year where I captured a lot of lovely photographs of her. And then we've been drawing them in a number of, a lot of them have been premium classes. So this is a two-part premium class on uh, capturing body proportions using a grid. And it's very step-by-step -step process to putting a grid, grid lines on this photograph and then sketching it out on large sketch paper and filling it in with some lovely value using uh, a ruler and, and the printout with the, the grid on the photo. And if you've never used a grid to draw before, it's definitely a game changer, especially if you really struggle to capture proportions. Like we just finished a three-part class on drawing uh, Sion's face and I know a lot of folks were still struggling with proportions at the, the end of that three-part class. 
and using a grid really helps um, to just see where you're you're off in your proportions and capturing likeness and it's very helpful for capturing body proportions so you don't want to miss that premium class it's a two-part class and the links to the youtube recordings for the premium classes are only sent to those who sign up ahead of time so make sure you sign up for those okay so i'm going to switch to my tabletop view and we'll get started with tonight's class um, unfortunately i can't really have the mannequin standing up and show you my tabletop view at the same time uh, it's too bad i don't have like a full you know production team and multiple camera angles i actually did have a class on drawing the mannequin a while back i think that was a premium class um, and it was the wooden hand and I did set up two webcams so that we could, you know, toggle back and forth between the view of the wooden hand and the drawing. But honestly, I think having the printout like this is uh, is better because when I did it that way, we were only relying on the light that I had set up on my desk right in front of me. And doing it this way, I was able to get some nice dramatic lighting so that we, and then also the shadow that I was seeing was different than the shadow that was being cast, uh, you know, for everyone viewing it through the webcam. So we weren't really drawing the same view, you know? So that was a little tricky. I think this is better because then we're all drawing the same shadow shapes and everybody has a nice reference. And if you have your mannequin, there in front of you, then you can pose it in a number of ways and you can follow along um, doing everything that we're doing tonight using your, your own setup. Okay, so don't forget to tag your work with those hashtags, make it with Michael's, Michael's classes. And follow me on Instagram at Adrian Hodge Art. I'm also on Facebook, Adrian Hodge Fine Art. And there's business cards. I'm always flashing on the screen if you want to check out some of my work um okay so we're using this fun little black sketchbook and i bought this a while back and i just been waiting for and i just to use it for something and then it occurred to me one day that i could use this to do something that i think is in, extremely important and valuable when learning to draw figures or really anything, and that's to focus on the shapes of the light more than the shapes of the shadows, because we tend to focus a lot on the shadow shapes in a, any given drawing, and people tend to not pay as much attention to the shapes of the light. So tonight we're really going to focus on the light. And just a little tip if you're working in a, a sketchbook like this and it's not laying flat on the table, you can use a little uh, binder clip or a um, clip like this. I use these to hang, hang my work in my studio and sometimes even gallery spaces, but it works really good to weight the, the sketchbook down so it'll lay flat. Okay, and it just looks cool. So I'm going to set that aside for a second. We're going to do a little bit of preliminary sketching on just a some scratch paper or your sketch paper. And then we're going to get into that with the uh, gel pen. But first, I just want to talk about basic body proportions. I'm not going to go super into it since I've covered it in so many other classes and uh, the link to the class that I, I mentioned um, was provided to you if you want to go back and uh check out that class but i'm just going to briefly just talk about um how we measure the body if you're new to drawing body proportions so there is no such thing as a perfectly proportioned body there's no standard body that we measure all other bodies against and say well this is the perfectly proportioned body and you know everybody deviates from this um there's no such thing so the way that we measure any given body is by that particular person's head measured against the rest of their body. So we use the head as the measurement. So 
the average person is five, uh, the average adult person is five to eight of their heads tall. So this wooden mannequin is labeled as male as um, because typically male born bodies are eight of their heads tall and um, bodies that are born female or bodies that are born with uteruses are typically five to seven of their heads tall, although they can, you know, anybody can be eight heads tall, but typically um, those born without a uterus are more likely to be eight of their heads tall. So this is labeled as the male mannequin. So we've got eight heads, the length of the head. So if we measure the length of the head, and I like to use just like a pencil, uh, put my finger on the pencil and measure the length of the head and then go down the length of the body to measure how many heads tall this uh, this mannequin is. Um, if you're curious about how many heads tall you are, you can take a ruler Let me grab my artist loft ruler right here. Don't believe I put a ruler on the supply list um, for tonight, but um, I've done this in the other classes as well. So you can maybe take a book and balance a book on your head for just a second, just to see where to help you with your, your ruler measurement. So you're measuring from the crown of your head, which is way up here. It's not your bangs, it's not your hairline, and it's not your forehead. It's the crown of your head where you would balance a book and then take your ruler and put the zero up there where the, the book is. And then you can find where your chin is in relationship to your the crown of your head or if you have somebody else there who can help you and then you can measure the length of your head from the crown of your head to your chin and once you have that measurement you can go down the length of your body starting from your chin and you should find or you most likely not you should there because i just said there's no such thing as a perfectly proportioned body but most likely uh, you will find that your second head length uh, stops right at the uh, breast line, at the highest part of the breast plate where the, the nipple line falls. That's your second head length, uh, most likely. And then generally uh, things start to break down after that because we're all differently proportioned uh, people. So I am six and a half of my heads tall. Um, so I've got a very short torso and very long legs. So my third head length is not going to fall at the same, you know, place on my body as somebody who might be the same height as me, but has a long torso and shorter legs. So we're all proportioned differently, but on the mannequin, the third head length is about at the smallest part of the waist or the waistline. And then the fourth head length is here at the um, uh, bottom of the, the hip joints or just before the, uh, the top of the thigh on the mannequin. And then the fifth head length is about just before the kneecap, six head, oh my God, am I getting, a, I'm getting ahead of myself here somehow. All right, so it's, let me switch to my tabletop view and we'll measure a little more. Let's just sketch it out. Okay, so we're gonna measure the head length from the top of the head to the, to the chin here. And then we're gonna see where that falls. So from the chin, right there, we're at the breast, highest point on the, the breastplate. And then from there, I'm just gonna scoot it up and we can see we're right there at the smallest part of the waist. So that's the third head length, fourth head length, right at the top of the hip joints, fifth head length. Okay, it's more like mid thigh. And then the sixth head length is just below the kneecap. That's where I got lost. And then the seventh head length is the bottom of the ankle. And then the eighth head length is the length of the foot. So see the length of the foot is about the same as the, the head. And like I said, that class uh, that I we linked 
back in February will take you to a class or that, yeah, that link will take you to the class where we break that down and we sketch it out and um, talk all about that in depth. And I'm not going to repeat it all because we already did a whole class uh, like that. Okay, so let's talk about what we're doing tonight. So this is this class tonight is really all about value. So just another way of sketching a body, sketching a wooden mannequin and focusing on the shapes of the light and the shapes of the dark value. Um, but this time we're focusing on the light. So the value scale that we like to talk about is we can represent it using a long skinny rectangle and we've got zero to 10 on this value scale. And you can put a five somewhere in the middle. The zero is usually when we're drawing on white paper is going to be the blank paper. Or today it's gonna be our absolute white with the pen. So our brightest white with the pen. And then our 10 on the value scale is typically when we're drawing on white paper is going to be our absolute black, which we would do with our pencil. But today we're switching it. Today, I'm always talking about blank paper for the zero, but today our absolute black is the blank paper because we're using black paper. So everywhere that we're seeing a 10 on the value scale today, we're gonna to be leaving that blank black paper. So we're just thinking in the negative today. And usually I provide inverted images and I just realized today would have been a great class to provide the inverted version of all of these photos, but we can easily, um, you can easily invert them if that helps you. All right. so. Typically we would use our darkest pencil, like a 6B or an 8B to get our absolute black on the value scale and then pull up on our pressure on that dark pencil to get our eights and nines and sevens on the value scale and then maybe switch to a 2B or an HB or a B for the midtones here. And if all of this is brand new to you, you can refer back to the very first class that we ever had uh, in this series. It was called Introduction to Graphite and Drawing Forms. We also had a number of classes at the very beginning that covered uh, all the different ways to achieve value, tonal value, and various shading techniques and we've covered it so many times at this point we're over a year and a half into the class um, this class series and then we're using the h pencils to get our lighter values and then we're leaving the the zero blank on the white paper but now let's pull out a piece of our black paper and let's let's switch that value scale so we're going to take our white gel pen, which I just tossed aside somewhere. Okay, and now hey, we're going Adrian. to, oh yes. Great question. Are we using chalk too or only gel pens? Yeah, we're just using a gel pen. If you've got some chalk that you want to use instead, by all means, or if you've got a white, um, yeah, chalk pastel or anything like that you can, but we're gonna use the pen. It just makes a nice crisp graphic line on this black paper and it's fun. Okay, so now we've got our zero to 10 value scale here on black paper and we're reversing it. So instead of using our graphite pencils to overlap. And so this is, we're using the shading techniques that we've covered in a number of classes up until now using pen and ink shading techniques, hatching, cross hatching, stippling, and scribbling. 
is what we're going to be using tonight, and I can briefly go over those in just a moment. But right now I'm just going to use hatching lines. So that's one directional lines that overlap until we get a solid uh, white to happen here. And then we're going to start to spread out those lines. So this is our, our white that's got a little bit of shadow coming into it. Just a hint of a shadow. And then for our darker values, we're going to be using a lot of blank paper. So this is where implied line with our, our pen is going to come in very handy. And honestly, we might not have all 10 of these values represented. I really just want you to get a feel for how you would go from light to dark with this pen. So let's practice it with all four of these shading techniques. So if most of your darker values are kind of all lumped in as your 10, that is really fine by me. Really just want you to get a feel for representing the light and then the light that's got a little bit of a mid-tone or dark and like this implied line. So just practice letting up on the pressure on the gel pen basically. All right, so hatching is what I just did right there. It's a one directional line that overlaps for our lightest lights and then spreads apart, and becomes more implied for our darker shadows, cross hatching. Is the same idea, but instead of one directional lines, we've got multiple directional lines. So we're going to overlap them until we get a solid white to happen and spread them apart. It's definitely easier for some reason to get this fade to happen with cross hatching, in my opinion. All right, and then we've got stippling And that is dots that we build up one at a time. And like I said, we've had a number of classes that have covered these shading techniques. You could search artist loft, hatching and cross hatching. There was a class that introduced all four of them in a two part class. So I did hatching and cross hatching in one class and then stippling and scribbling in the other, but we've covered these in so many classes up until now. So stippling is dots that overlap until we get to that solid white. It's very forgiving. It just takes a lot of patience. This is the easiest of the shading techniques because it's just one dot at a time. And then we're gonna spread them out. Space them out more for our darker values. and then let it become that blank black paper eventually. And then we've got scribbling, which is exactly like it sounds. It's just a scribble or a random mark that's gonna overlap for the brightest whites. Oh, I had a dry spot on the gel pen that happens when you overlap a little too much. Okay, sometimes when they start running out of ink, that can be good because then you can really get those darker areas to happen. So we're just reversing everything with the, and we usually do when we're doing pens on white paper. All right, so any questions about those shading techniques? 
I'm gonna grab a backup gel pen in case that happens again where I hit a dry spot. Okay, so let's start sketching one of these these images of the mannequin. If you want to pose your mannequin in a, a gesture pose, it's just a highly activated pose where there's like a lot of movement happening. Um, or you can use these reference photos that I provided where the mannequin's already in some cool gesture poses. And also the thing about these reference photos that's the most helpful is that there's very strong contrasted light. So if you're sitting in a room that has overhead lighting and you're not really seeing a lot of contrasted light, like strong light shapes on your mannequin and strong shadows uh, falling across the table, you might get a desk lamp or some lamp around your house that would create a strong light source and put that on your mannequin and then you'll start to see some areas where it's lit up really bright and then some areas where there's some very dark shadowy shapes. If you don't have highly contrasted light, then this exercise might be a little more challenging, I think, then you might end up drawing more the entire shapes of the mannequin, but we're really going to focus on these, uh, these areas of light and dark, the organic shapes of shadows and the organic shapes of light. And like I said, we typically focus on the shadows a lot, but today I want to focus on the light. So looking at this pose right here, we're looking for the areas where it shows up really light, right? So we're just going to draw those shapes. And even if you are brand new to sketching the human form or a wooden mannequin like this representing the human form, that's OK. All I want you to do is look for these organic shapes of light. So this is the little shape that I'm seeing on the neck, the little neck joint shape on the mannequin. So I just filled that in with absolute white because it's showing up absolute white for me. And then there's this big shape of the, the back of the mannequin, but not all of it is absolute white. So this is where I might use a hatching or cross hatching line to start to fill in like more of a one or a two on the value scale of light. And then I'm seeing this shape coming down. And then there's the smallest part of the waist joint there. So I'm just guiding myself around by the shapes of the light. The other thing that I'm doing right now is I'm following the contours of the form. And those of you who are my regulars who come to the classes all the time, you know I'm always talking about these two things value shapes and contour lines. So those are the outer lines or the elevational lines of a form that represent the, um, the elevational, the elevation of the form. So we're talking about the curve of the side of the hand. We're talking about the curve of an apple, that very first class on Introduction to Graphite and Drawing Forms talks all about uh, how to see contour lines. So we're looking for the contours or the curves of the form of the wooden mannequin here. So we might have a curved hatching line because there's a curved waist or there's a curve along the back or there's a curve along the, the shoulder joint here that I just added. 
So we're really just looking at the, the lighter shapes. And then as we get down onto the body here, or the further down on the body, the bottom of the waist and the, the back backside here of the mannequin, it is still pretty light, but it's more of like a mid tone, like a four on the value scale. So, but I'm, I'm not gonna go that deep into the shadows cause I'm gonna, remember we're gonna lump a lot of the shadows into the absolute uh, blank paper. So we're just looking at the light and letting it guide us around here. Hey, so, Adrian. Mm -hmm. um, what size or number gel pen are you using? Oh, it is, it looks like the 08 is what it says on the side. This is just the, I guess I never really look at the sizes of the, the gel pen, but this is just whatever was the, the standard bulk that they had a whole bunch of. One day I bought a whole bunch of these and haven't had to buy any more in a long time because I still have so many. Okay, so this is where the leg is right there. And body proportions can be very tricky. I provided that uh, other class link where we talked about capturing body proportions. And this is just another way to practice sketching the human form and to help your eyes to see uh, proportions and to see where things line up in reference to each other. And I think this helps your brain quite a bit just to be guided around by the, the light shapes. And I'm just skipping over anything that's a shadow. That's even a mid-tone shadow, anything from a five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten on that value scale, getting into the darker zone, I'm leaving it alone. I'm just lumping it all together and leaving it blank paper so that we're really just sketching the light here. So it's really fun because all the stuff that I cover in that other class, capturing movement, uh, the weight of the form, I didn't want to go into all that because I've already done that class before. I want to illustrate how easily we can capture those things by just tricking our brains a little bit here into looking at the opposite of how we've approached it in the past. So let's do it again. We're just gonna do this until the end of the class here and see what kind of results we get. And if you're not getting a good result on your first try, then you are probably not alone. Um, you can't really expect to start practicing a new skill and give it five minutes and master it, right? We gotta practice new things quite a bit before they look effortless or before they look the way we're hoping for them to look. Sometimes you get lucky, but we gotta develop a muscle memory. Also, if we don't have an understanding of basic body proportions, that's why you can go back and check out that other class and then come back to this. But maybe this is giving you some magic results because you're not so focused on making all those things happen. I think it's very easy to overthink drawing a human form because we are humans and we wanna make ourselves look good on paper like a psychological thing. Whereas if we were all drawing an apple right now, just the highlights of an apple, we might have an easier time of it. But since we're focusing on a mannequin, which represents a human form, there's all this pressure, psychological pressure being added on top of it. So I'm just, again, I'm just going down the length of this, this pose here looking at where the light is hitting it more directly. So like on the neck and the waist, that's where I'm overlapping my hatching and cross hatching lines to get more of a solid white to happen. And then I'm spreading apart those contour lines, the cross hatching lines 
where I'm seeing a lighter, or sorry, a little bit of a shadow in the light. So a two or a three, or maybe a four on the value scale. And then we're leaving everything that's a five and above on the value scale. We're leaving it blank paper. So we're getting a very dramatic uh, form to happen here, highly contrasted. Okay, so really, if we're just focusing on these things, we should have emerging just like a photo negative in a dark room. We're starting to see the, the weight of the form, the curve, the gesture of this pose, all from just looking at the light. And we've had a number of classes where we've done this same technique. We had a premium class on capturing movement in a gesture using uh, images of Sion or model in some highly dynamic poses. And we were just looking at the darkest shapes of the shadows. That was a premium class. So we wouldn't have that link available on YouTube um, unless you happened to attend that class and you could refer back to that one. Um, but yeah, we're doing the opposite here. Okay, so for that one, everything else is kind of in shadow except for this one floating foot here. And maybe we could go ahead and put a little bit of the leg so that it's not just a floating foot. All right, let's move on to another one. Go back and squeeze a couple onto the same page as this one. Oh boy, that one turned out. I want a few next to it here. Let's do this one right here, be number four in this sequence. So, starting with the shape on the top of the head, it's nice and rounded. So, I'm going to give it some curved contour lines. And then there's this very dramatic angle down on one side, and then that's it. The rest of it's in shadow, so I'm gonna leave it alone. But then I got the neck and shoulder shape. It's a or very organic shape of light. And then the arm curves out like this. And honestly, if you're brand new to sketching uh, or sketching a wooden mannequin or sketching the human form, I wouldn't even worry about proportions too much at this point. I would just focus on the style and technique of, of this method and getting this highly contrasted image to emerge on this black paper. And if your proportions are looking wonky or not realistic or not perfectly like the mannequin, I wouldn't worry about that too much. I love focusing on stylized quality of things and capturing the essence of something before realism. And I think it's a lot more fun to, a to approach your drawing practice like this because there's less pressure for, you know, like, who are you learning to draw for? Is it to impress someone? Is it for your own gratification? Is it for some audience member? 
Hopefully it's not for an audience member and it's not to impress someone, although I know that those are always cool things to achieve out of an art practice, but I think personal enjoyment should be at the top of the list for art making. We all made art when we were kids. I see there's some kids in our, our group today. Um, you know, and then at some point in our lives, and I teach a lot of adults, I teach on the, the corporate level now, um, these classes, and then also I work for Meta, which formerly Facebook, but since they own all those things, it's Meta now. And uh, I teach engineers and people who work for Meta, I do art classes as like a mental break for them all day long. That's my day job. And I encounter so many people who tell me every day that they stopped making art at some point in their lives because someone told them they were doing it wrong. And I'm willing to bet a lot of you have encountered something like that. And that is just so sad to me and so depressing because art should be for everyone and we should make art for the enjoyment of it, for just the pure joy of it. I mean, isn't it cool that we can just look at these shapes of light and keep sketching them and then an image that resembles a figure can emerge on this black paper. It's pretty gratifying and it doesn't take that much effort. So I forget what my point was. <laughs> product process over product here. Don't be discouraged because your product is not living up to some expectations. Okay, so I moved on to this one right here. Number seven, I guess, in the sequence, if we're reading it from left to right. So I'm just looking for the light shapes. And this time I didn't start with the head. I started with the arm and the, the shoulder area there. And the only way that you could really approach this, like I've approached sketching the figure before, stacking shapes and kind of like a stick figure or a lollipop, if you were to do it that way on this black paper, you'd probably have to start with pencil first, because um, if you did it with white, then all that would, would build up on top of each other. If you were using a chalk pastel, then I guess you could erase some lines. Um, but doing it like this means that you most likely don't have to erase anything. I mean, we can't erase because we can't erase the gel pen on this white paper. So following it around this way and using kind of a minimalist approach limits what I might want to erase. And if I make a drawing that I'm not super satisfied with, or it has a bunch of unintentional lines I didn't need to mean to be there, then I can just Turn the page and start a new one. So I'm using a lot of hatching and cross hatching lines. I'm going to do one where I do a lot of scribbling next. Started to scribble right here on the shoulder and then I went back to hatching, but I can easily combine them too. So let's, let's scribble these out a little more now that we've got the hang of what we're doing here. So scribbling definitely takes a little bit more skill to like get what you want to happen, takes a little more practice with. Um, it could very easily get away from you because you're going really fast. I think hatching, you can kind of build a little slower with this process. I'm all for just going for it. And then, like I said, if it doesn't turn out the way you want, then you just try again. But definitely 
the scribbling is going to get us that kind of like loose gestural devil may care kind of thing to happen, which I'm a big fan of. And we might capture the movement in these poses. So if you're on board for using up a lot of this paper and practicing this a lot, I would keep doing this with a, a scribble method. You're likely to get some really fun results. Actually, yeah, let's do another one scribbling. So I'm going to go kind of fast here. It's hard to do that in, in a slow motion for me. I'm doing number eight in the sequence now. And I'm just going to embrace any wonky things that happen. I'm overlapping my scribbling where I want it to be really light. Also, if you're just feeling like everything you're drawing is super tight and not loose, then just doing a few scribble sketches like this might help loosen you up. And if you're really struggling and everything is just super tight and you're like, I don't know what you're talking about, I am not making this happen here, then I would, if you're watching this later on YouTube, I would pause. Or if you're, you know, watching live right now, I would just do like all nine of these really quickly and just try to scribble them all out and just keep doing it until the light bulb starts to click on. I feel like every other drawing I'm doing here, I'm really satisfied with. So you're not alone if you're not feeling satisfied with all of them. Also, we could do some blind contours here to really help us. So that's where, and I've done this in a number of classes and it can really help loosen you up if you're just still feeling really tight. Um, another thing to help with just creating a loose muscle memory is to just take your pencil and just do a number of figure eights on your page. Just keep scribbling a figure eight over and over again, and that can give you a nice loose muscle memory for your hand. But a blind contour is where we do everything that we've been doing today because we're really drawing the, the contours of the light here, but we don't look at our drawing hand. So we only look at the mannequin. So if you're drawing the mannequin itself, you could put your mannequin on the other side of your table in a nice contrasted light, or if you're drawing the, um, the one of the reference photos, Turn your body where you are facing away from your drawing hand so you're not tempted to look because that'll just keep you from losing focus and you might judge your drawing too quickly. And so I'm going to go back to that very first one and I'm going to just draw the light, let everything that we've been doing so far, but I'm going to do it without looking at my paper or my drawing hand. So I'm just looking at the reference image now. I'm gonna scribble it and it might look crazy. I don't know what's gonna happen. It's a live class, it might look ridiculous and then I'll just turn the page real quick. Oh my gosh, my gel pen kinda didn't make a mark. Although it actually looks really great. I think it looks good. I just 
hit a dry spot on that pen. <laughs> Let me try that again. All right, one more time, and the pen's gonna release white gel ink this time. Hopefully, I'm not looking. So sketching this way may just end up with a big pile of scribbles in your sketchbook, but it develops a muscle memory and it also helps with just looking, creating that communication between your eye and your drawing hand. That one really resembles that figure. I can see the head and see the, the back here. And it got a little long, like the proportions got really stretched out that like that one leg there. I'm really feeling the, the movement of that form. All right, so we have eight minutes left in the class and I'd love to see y'all's uh, sketches before the class is over. Are there any questions about this process that I could address or any requests? Otherwise, I'm just gonna do a couple more examples before we we go. No questions so far, it looks like. Okay, cool. Um, let me do one that's a little more zoomed in here. Just because of the reference images being kind of zoomed out, but let me try to really get in there and zoom in on one of them. Uh, I'll do, do this one again, number four. Make it a little bigger this time. So this is the shape that I'm seeing at the top of the head where the light is hitting it. And the light's hitting it more directly at the top. A little bit of a football shape there. It's gonna be like an Olin Mills photo here where it's like <laughs> the, the zoomed in portrait on one side floating next to the zoomed out portrait over there on the other side. Okay, and then this is the shoulder area. And there's that big shape of the shadow, which we're just leaving blank black paper. And we've got the other shoulder here. I'm looking at the relationship between these wooden mannequin body parts to each other. So the elbow is in line with the waist and everything's kind of curved, curled up here in this pose. And this arm is outstretched and it looks like it's gonna have to go off my page. But then that arm is also curved.
And then the waist is coming forward, the hip area, it's all kind of curved in the middle there at the waist. And then this part of the arm comes down pretty far. And then we've got the wrist joint, the elbow joint, and that big paddle hand. And that is pretty in line with the kneecap here. So then we can connect the rest of that right there. Right, starting to develop now. All right, well, that ate up the last few minutes of the class. Well, I'd love to see what uh, y'all's sketches look like from this exercise. Um, if you can just hold up, anybody who wants to share, just hold up your drawings and we can spotlight you. Oh, very nice. That looks like some chalk pastel on white paper instead of pen. I love it. Love your notes there. Looking really nice. Oh, and I'm really seeing the, the gesture of those poses. Very nice. I like how you did them all on one page, too. That's a great method. Oh, how lovely. Look at that. You got the whole pose there. You got another one? Oh, yeah. Look how you really got the movement of that one. I feel like it's hunched over. You really captured it. Great work. Oh, yes, look at that one emerging from the darkness. I love it. Oh, I really feel the gesture and the weight of that one. Really strong. Very nice. What a fun pose. That one's dancing. Let's see. Oh, yes. Oh, I love it. I love that one, the ones that are just, just barely emerging. You really feel the, the movement of those with so minimal action. And I can tell you did a blind contour over there on the right, but still captured the movement and gesture of that one. Really lovely. Hold it back just a little bit for me. It's a little close. Pull it back a little, maybe? No? Okay, I see it now, yes, all right. Yeah, really capturing that figure emerging there. And I can see another sketch behind it that looks good. All right, I love how, even though we're not using the, the same method, you just, wow, that's amazing. Some gorgeous value there. I hope this was still helpful for seeing all those lights, even though we were working in reverse tonight. That's gorgeous. All right. Oh, we got some more. Oh, yeah. Really capturing that movement there. Well, thank you all so much. This was so fun. Such wonderful results. Um, and if we didn't get to spotlight you, you can share them on social media and tag me at Adrian Hodge Art or use those hashtags make it with Michael's or Michael's classes and make sure you sign up for those February, February classes starting next week. Um, February 1st is next Wednesday and we've got the mixed media roses and then that grid drawing class. So hopefully I'll see you in all of those classes. Thank you all and have a wonderful evening. Good night.